At the beginning of every month, I'm gonna be giving you guys a list of seeds you can start for your garden. Now, one of the first things you're probably thinking, what if I'm not in your zone specifically? This is going to apply to anyone that has a winter. If you have a winter, then this video will work. I want you to trust the process and kind of throw those last frost dates out the window. The reason for it is we can modify our micro environments with low tunnels, greenhouses, and even something as simple as cutting the top off of a milk jug and using that as a mini greenhouse around the plant. So first on the list, we have artichokes. Artichokes can be used as pretty looking decorative pieces, but they also are edible. Now, all three varieties I'm going to speak about today are edible varieties, and some are perennials depending on what environment or what zone you are in, and this is where zones do play into it. So the first two are the green globes and the cardon. The cardon is more of a decorative plant that only gets about four feet tall, but it has a ton of flowers. The green globes are some of the biggest artichoke bulbs out there, and with that being said, are edible and decorative at the same time, but they do get to be about six feet tall. Now in zone eight plus, these would be considered perennials. And if you want to use them for perennial purposes, please do start them in January. You want to get them a little bit of a head start. However, there is one version of artichoke that only has an 85 growing day period. And that actually, if you know anything about plants, is around the same period that a pepper or a tomato would need. These plants don't have to be started in January. They would be started sometime in March. I've tried these in the past. I actually tried them last year. They're called the Imperial Star. They're really petite plants. They do really well in containers, similar to what peppers would do well in, in our environment. They're very pretty looking flowers and very unique looking plants. So definitely an option out there. The bulbs are between the smaller cardon decorative ornamental artichoke and the big giant green globes. And if you are in a zone six plus, or if you heavily mulch in a zone five, these actually can become perennials in your zone. Next up is onions. So I'm not gonna start my onions in January. I likely will start mine in February, only because I have a very busy January. But if you're doing sweet onions or storage bulbs, then these are definitely something to think about. What I will say is onions like to be transplanted outdoors in cold soil. If you wanna prevent them from bolting or flowering and not developing a large bulb, the sooner you get them in the ground, the better. Also, when you get them in the ground sooner, you can avoid other problems such as pests and disease that tend to come later in the season. So onions are one that I would start from seed early. And if you did not know, starting onions from seed versus starting onions from set, the seeds do grow bigger bulbs. And I've noticed that personally after last year when I decided to go strictly with seeds. So with that being said, if you choose to start these, I'll leave a list of options you can use below. I personally really like the Khaleesi. I tried that last year. I got some really good storage off of them so far, and I did get some pretty ginormous bulbs. They're pretty fascinating looking. Next up is lavender. So everyone loves lavender, and in some zones it's a perennial, in some zones it's an annual, but regardless, they are beautiful. So I'm gonna give you two options. One, the first one is being the French lavender, which is just your very classic, heavily scented, potpourri, it looks like lavender, like the picturesque lavender. These can be started indoors. They need a ton of growing degree days, so you definitely wanna start these in January or very, very early February. The second option is actually a less heavily scented lavender, and the flowers are a little bit more unique looking. I personally find them to be very pretty, and that is the Spanish lavender. So there's two different options there, the more heavily scented classic lavender, and then the Spanish, which is a prettier flower and tends to be a little bit easier to grow. But like I said, we can treat these as annuals. We don't always have to treat these things as perennials for those of us in cold climates that want the benefits of lavender. Next up, we have a weird one, and that is eucalyptus. This, oddly enough, is becoming a very popular annual plant to grow. I'm seeing it sold more and more as a pot stuffer, although they do sell out very, very quickly. One thing I will say is eucalyptus absolutely needs to be started in January. Do not put this off to February. So I'll leave a link down below for where you can grab seeds, but these like to be started in a warmer environment and you want to treat them like a house plant once everything is germinated and ready to go. If you wanted to try to overwinter this plant, you could technically, because it doesn't need a dormancy period. Next up, we have rosemary. So rosemary is one of those plants that need typically a longer growing season and the longer the growing season, the larger the plant becomes and the more harvest we can get from that. They are perennial hardy above zone eight, zone eight and above. So if you're in that realm, that is something to think about. Now with that being said, you could, and I have started rosemary kind of the same time I've started the basil and everything else. You just don't get as big of a harvest because the really big explosion of growth doesn't happen until a little bit later in that 
that summer season. The last grouping is for those of you that want a cut flower farm, a pretty looking yard, or simply want to attract more pollinators to the yard. So these ones are actually for the most part perennial plants that can be started indoors early to allow you to have really nice early spring blooms. So these are just kind of a guidelines of ones that you can use. However, don't shy away from just starting anything indoors that, that likes to flower in spring. The only thing you want to look for is ones that are sensitive to transplanting. So for example, poppies are a very early summer bloomer. However, they don't respond well to transplant. So just keep that in mind. But ones that do respond well to transplant, bumping up and just being overall manipulated include roses, columbines, violas, and foxgloves. So those are four that you can actually start indoors now to give you those nice early spring blooms, regardless of what the climate outdoors decides to do. So I hope this helped you guys understand what you can start in January. Be sure to leave your comments down below on ones that you like to start in January because I would be interested to hear what those look like. And of course, as always, continue to send me your seed starting setups. I really like looking at all the different ideas out there. And I actually gather some uh, tips and tricks myself off of some of your very creative designs. So I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.